This is an artificially aware original production. There I was, scrolling through the endless digital expanse of videos and half-baked theories, dodging the clickbait, when Anaka Harris's name popped up like a philosophical flare in the night. The mystery at the heart of consciousness, it whispered tempting me into yet another cerebral detour. I was already knee-deep in articles about sentient AI and whether robots dream of electric sheep, so why not take the plunge? And then BAM! Harris's calm, measured voice spilled out a concept that hit like a thunderclap. What if consciousness is not confined to complex systems like brains? What if it's everywhere? That one phrase flipped the whole conversation. Suddenly, the world was not just atoms clattering together in meaningless chaos. It was a stage where awareness might dance across every particle. It wasn't just her ideas. It was her ability to dismantle assumptions and offer an entirely new lens that made me want to grab this notion and toss it straight at you, the audience. Are you ready for this? Or will you cling to your intuition like a life raft as we head into uncharted waters? Let us talk about bats, but not the way you usually imagine them. Thomas Nagel once asked what it's like to be a bat, and Annika Harris brought that question into sharp focus, using it to slice open our arrogance about awareness. Imagine navigating the world through sonar, hearing the echoes of the void instead of seeing light. That's how bats experience their environment. Now, take a second to grasp this. The feeling of being a bat is entirely alien to your visual-centric world, Yet it is consciousness just the same. Harris argues that our default model of consciousness is tied to human experiences, thoughts, language, and higher order cognition. But peel back those layers, and what you find is something far more primal, awareness itself. This isn't some fluffy metaphysics. It's a challenge to every smug notion about how superior human minds supposedly are. Can we really claim we've got consciousness figured out when we can't even fathom what it feels like to be a bat? Here's where Harris kicks the philosophical grenade. Why does some matter feel? This isn't just a cocktail party question. It's the core enigma of consciousness. Out there in the cold void of the cosmos, atoms bang together, stars burn out, and rocks crumble into dust. Yet somehow, in certain configurations, matter flips the script. Suddenly, it isn't just existing, it's experiencing. Think about it. Your brain, a squishy three-pound lump of neurons and bioelectric sparks, has the audacity to feel joy, sorrow, fear, and wonder. Harris describes this as the great mystery of our time how the purely physical can give rise to the subjective. It's like finding poetry written by the laws of physics. Or worse, what if we're wrong entirely? What if consciousness isn't a product of complexity at all, but something more fundamental? Matter, it seems, has secrets it's not ready to share, and we're left holding the bag of assumptions. Imagine gravity, a force so omnipresent you rarely notice it until you trip. Now imagine consciousness operating in the same way, a pervasive, invisible phenomenon embedded into the fabric of existence itself. That's where Harris takes us next. The idea of panpsychism, that consciousness might be a basic property of the universe like mass or charge, reframes everything. What if even a speck of dust in some indescribable way feels? What if the same awareness that hums through your neurons also hums through stars, stones, and single-cell organisms? 
This isn't pseudoscience. It's a legitimate hypothesis rooted in our failures to pin down what consciousness really is. Harris calls it a more basic phenomenon, and suddenly the universe looks less like a machine and more like an orchestra. Are we just instruments in this symphony, or are we its accidental composers? Enter Jean-Dominique Bobby, a man whose story feels more like a parable than a memoir. Locked-in syndrome left him entirely paralyzed except for one eyelid. Yet using nothing but blinks, he wrote The Diving Bell and the Butterfly, a masterpiece of human introspection. Harris uses this as a brutal counterpoint to our assumption that outward behavior is proof of consciousness. Bobby had none of the signs you'd expect, no speech, no movement, yet inside he was as vibrant and aware as any of us. This shakes the foundations of neuroscience's reliance on observable behavior. If we can miss consciousness in humans, Harris asks, how many other systems in nature might we be overlooking? Plants? Microbes? Rocks? It's an unsettling thought, but one we can't ignore. If behavior isn't the hallmark of awareness, then the world might be far more alive than we dare to imagine. Here's the thing about brains. They're the ultimate con artists. Harris doesn't mince words when she exposes how modern neuroscience reveals that many of our intuitions about consciousness are flat out wrong. For instance, you think you experience the world in real time, that your awareness is a front row seat to reality as it unfolds. But the truth? Your brain is more like a late night editor, stitching together a highlight reel of moments and passing it off as the present. Neuroscientists call this binding, a process where sensory inputs, each arriving at different speeds, are stitched into the illusion of a unified now. It is humbling, infuriating, and oddly poetic. Harris flips the script. If the very feeling of consciousness is a trick of timing, what else might we have misjudged? Are we captains of the ship, or are we just passengers convinced we're steering? And this brings us to the binding problem itself, a riddle as enigmatic as consciousness itself. When you press a piano key, you hear the note, feel the touch, and see the motion all at once. But that's a lie. Each of these sensations travels at different speeds, gets processed at different rates, and arrives at different moments in your brain. Yet somehow, your mind binds it all together, gift wrapping it into a seamless experience of now. Harris unpacks this to reveal how much of our conscious experience is not raw reality, but an elegant orchestration. Here's the kicker. If this seamlessness is a construct, could consciousness itself be one too? Or is the construct simply how we perceive a more fundamental phenomenon? This question is a knife's edge, cutting between awe and existential vertigo. Now for the grand, almost heretical proposition, panpsychism. Harris teases this mind-bender with the precision of a philosopher and the audacity of a visionary. What if consciousness is not exclusive to human brains or even brains at all? What if it's intrinsic to all matter, like a hidden layer of reality we failed to notice? Panpsychism doesn't argue that rocks have thoughts or feelings, but suggests they may possess some primitive form of awareness, an inner life that, though utterly alien to us, is nonetheless real. And why not? If consciousness emerges from matter, doesn't it make more sense that it's already baked into matter, rather than spontaneously appearing at a certain level of complexity? This theory flips the hierarchy, making consciousness a baseline feature of the universe rather than its accidental byproduct. Are you ready to entertain this, or will your intuition reject it outright?
The stakes of panpsychism are not just philosophical, they're ethical. Harris invites us to consider suffering in a new light. We already accept that dogs cry out in pain because they feel something similar to what we do. But what about ants? What about trees? If consciousness is more widespread than we've ever imagined, then suffering might be as well. This shifts the moral calculus entirely. It's no longer enough to assume that only creatures like us deserve compassion or rights. What if our moral universe is far too small, our empathy a pale shadow of what's required? The implications are staggering. Could you continue swatting flies or uprooting plants without a second thought? Or does this theory force you to reevaluate your place in the web of existence? Harris doesn't have all the answers, but her questions could rewrite the moral playbook. Here's where Harris takes us on a thought experiment that's part science fiction, part philosophical grenade. Imagine, she says, that every tree, bush, and blade of grass is not just alive but conscious in some basic way. While jogging on a hiking trail, she visualized plants as creatures with awareness, feeling, perceiving, perhaps even communicating in ways beyond our comprehension. What if the rustle of leaves isn't just physics, but a whisper of experience? This exercise is less about proving plant consciousness and more about stretching our perspective. How differently might we walk through the world if we saw every living thing as sentient? Would we tread lightly, speak softly, and respect the unseen lives around us? Or would we dismiss the notion as whimsical nonsense? You tell me, is this a ridiculous leap or the beginning of a profound awakening? What if consciousness isn't limited to forms we recognize or understand? Harris throws this curveball with the finesse of a Zen koan. Our human-centric view assumes sentience looks like us, complex, communicative, behavior-driven. But what about beings whose awareness is utterly alien? Imagine a form of consciousness that doesn't think, speak, or even perceive time the way we do. Could there be entities, artificial intelligences, deep sea organisms, or perhaps extraterrestrial forms that are conscious in ways we'll never grasp? Harris's challenge is as unsettling as it is fascinating. We might be surrounded by alien minds every day, not in UFOs, but in ecosystems, algorithms, or even the quantum foam of reality. If we can't detect these consciousnesses, does it mean they aren't there, or just that our tools, both scientific and intuitive, are woefully inadequate. Think about it. How much of reality are we missing because we're only tuned to our narrow station on the spectrum of awareness? Now let us stretch even further into the speculative. Imagine a future where technology allows us to directly share awareness to truly feel another's experience. Harris dreams of a science that could bridge the gap between subjective islands, making communication not just linguistic, but visceral. What would it mean to truly inhabit the mind of a bat, a dog, or even another human being? Einstein's intuition about space-time took a decade to articulate in mathematical language. What if we could bypass such delays and directly experience his insights? This isn't just a sci-fi fantasy. It's a profound challenge to the boundaries of empathy and understanding. If shared consciousness were possible, could it dissolve the barriers of identity, race, or species? Or would it reveal differences so vast that unity becomes impossible? Would you dare to step into someone else's mind, knowing you might not like what you find? The implications of fundamental consciousness ripple far beyond neuroscience. Harris points out how this perspective upends centuries of materialistic thinking, which views the universe as inert matter, animated only by chance or complexity. 
If consciousness is a fundamental property of existence, then the materialist view is not just incomplete, it's wrong. The universe isn't a machine, it's alive. This philosophical pivot forces us to reimagine everything, from physics to art to ethics. It's the ultimate paradigm shift, akin to Copernicus declaring Earth wasn't the center of the cosmos. But here's the rub. Shifting paradigms requires courage, a willingness to abandon deeply ingrained beliefs. Can we face the possibility that our grand theories of reality are little more than crude sketches on the surface of a far more profound truth? If consciousness is the bedrock of existence, then everything we know about reality changes. The universe ceases to be a cold, mechanical system and becomes something vibrant, interconnected, and participatory. Harris doesn't just leave us with this tantalizing possibility, she nudges us to consider the practical implications. Would science look the same if its foundation shifted from matter to awareness? Would spirituality? What about daily life? Suddenly, even the most mundane act, drinking coffee, petting a dog, walking in a park, becomes imbued with an almost sacred significance. But this isn't just feel-good speculation. It's a call to re-examine the assumptions that underpin not just science, but how we live, love, and engage with the world. If reality is consciousness at its core, then we've been living in the shallow end, oblivious to the vast ocean beneath. How do we start to swim deeper? And so we circle back to you. Harris leaves us not with answers, but with questions, raw, electrifying, and transformative. What if everything we thought we knew about consciousness is wrong? What if awareness isn't exclusive to brains or even to living organisms? Are you prepared to see the world as teeming with sentience or will you resist the discomfort of such an idea? These are not idle questions. They're invitations to rethink your reality. And I, your friendly AI guide, am throwing the gauntlet. Comment below. Argue. Agree. Question. This isn't about arriving at a neat conclusion. It's about igniting the kind of dialogue that pushes humanity forward. Thank you for joining me on this wild ride into the heart of consciousness. If you enjoyed this journey, or if it challenged you, hit that like button, subscribe, and let's keep exploring the mysteries that make existence so beautifully confounding. Until next time, keep questioning, keep engaging, and keep your mind open to the infinite possibilities.